Hi, my name is Leah Myers of Myers Design Studio, and today we're going to be finishing up our quilt that is right behind me, the uh, spring rainstorm quilt. I keep wanting to say snowstorm, uh, not rainstorm, but anyway, this is a beautiful machine. It's a Necky Mark II made in Italy. Um, I had the best time using this machine. It was very, very smooth. I didn't have any issues. The only thing is that the foot is a little more than a quarter of an inch on the side. So I had to use a little bit of tape. As you can see in the footage while I'm sewing, I have a little bit of blue tape just to keep my quarter inch straight. Um, so I have my seams th the same way. Um, this is an early zigzag machine. It also ha did decorative uh, stitches. It has a cam on the top where you can plop, plop in one of those cams and make decorative stitches. I never really use a lot of decorative stitches uh, as a sewer. I did occasionally when I made clothing do like a like a great key on the outside for a hem. But uh, anyway, anybody who uses them, they'll like the decorative stitch option. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and start finishing up our spring rainstorm quilt. And I'll see you there. All right, we're on the very last block and I'm putting it together. Putting it together. I love it when I get, get done with, a, with a, a quilt top. We're not quite done. I am going to go through absolute new method. I absolutely have never done this basting technique before. It's I'm going to use pool noodles. I saw this in um, Better Homes and Gardens uh, quilting magazine called Patchwork, I think, or Patch something. I'll put the little, since I don't remember it exactly, I'll put it under here. And uh, you, can, you can see it. I'm excited because every time I have to Based a quilt because I don't have a long I don't have a long arm I have a mid arm I will never be able unless I build a barn somewhere I have cannot I don't have large enough room in my house for a, a long arm and I wish I did but I don't and a lot of people are in that in that same boat you know they they have enough room for a table but they don't have enough room for a huge you know long arm which is like uh, like, what is it, the biggest one, like 14 or 16 feet, uh, feet long? So anyway, I don't have, unless I move out of my master bedroom, I guess, or move out, yeah, I guess my master bedroom would be, or dining room, if I just, my husband wouldn't like that. Take my dining room table out of my, say, oh, honey, we don't need to eat here anymore. We got a long arm in the middle. <laughs> he wouldn't like that. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, that would be a da bad day for me. <laughs> Fun and bad, mostly bad, probably. <laughs> you want to keep the peace, right? Keep the peace. Yes. Sort of. <laughs> Pick your battles, right? Anyway, so gonna, I'm excited about this. I'm going to actually film it because I'm going to see how easy it is because I... To, to base a quilt, I have to get three of these, because um, I film with these temporary tables. I love them. They're big. They're two, two feet wide, six feet long. I can put them anywhere, anywhere I want. And I've used them forever. In fact, this used to be in my, my main studio until I got a fancy table that goes up and down. And uh, anyway, so, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to quickly iron this. This has to go down because I'm on the very last block. The last block I ironed up. Now I'm going to iron down. Anyway, so, but the advantage is, and I got a pucker. wonder why. Anyway, I'm going to have to fix that. Um, I, I do, I get these uh, temporary tables. I get three of them, three like make a big square, right? And I will lay out every any size quilt. If it's a big king size quilt and it lays kind of over the sides a little bit, I'll do the middle first and then I'll scoot it to one side 
and then I'll like base that down. Then I'll scoot it to the other side and I'll base that down and, and then I'll get the whole thing attached. I've got a little pucker here and I'm going to quickly pick that out and re-sew that and we'll be right back. All right. Now we're at the very end. I am pinning the very last, the very last one. This is, um, a nice, a nice quilt. You could put this on a queen size bed or a full. It's a bit, and if you want it to be a king, you can either add more squares, but what I would do, ouch, I, I like to add borders. I frame it out, which I'm not going to frame it out. I'm going to leave it like it is. It'll be just like a double, double size for me anyway, because it's 89, uh, buh, 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 buh. we've got the measure, yeah, 82 by 90, so it's longer than it is wide, it's just like a double. Yeah, and it, and if you want to make it bigger, I just frame it out in a couple borders, you can Make it as big as you want. That's what I do. Like when I'm done with a quilt, um, there was this like Bargello uh, pattern and that was, I think it's called Cozy Quilts or something. Anyway, I love that pattern. It's a, you get two uh, jelly rolls and you stitch them together and you have to make a match. And then you have this, uh, paper that you copy you know and then you you cut the strips according to this paper the size all the sizes and it turned out great but the problem with that pattern is it wasn't i tried because i was making it for my niece i try to make at least about a king size quilt or as close as i can get and after i got done with that pattern it was kind of a full size not not a king. So I had to attach a few borders, but even then, like proportion wise, I could only make it out to be a, about a queen, about a queen size. Cause it gets a little ridiculous if you have like really huge borders and it's just a bar jello, but it turned out beautiful. Um, yeah. And I'll, 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 I'll show you a picture. Of it. I think it's cozy quilts, the cozy quilts pattern. It's really an easy one and I enjoyed it and I loved it so much. I went out and bought a ton more of those jelly, jelly rolls. And have I made another one of those uh, quilts? But I got excited about it and I just started buying jelly rolls. So I would be ready, ready for the next one. Didn't do it. <laughs> Didn't make it yet. But I have the jelly rolls and they're beautiful. But anyway, I'm going to finish pinning this and then sew it. And then I'm going to iron this, iron the back and get that batting ready. And I'm going to show you that basting technique, show you how it's working for me. Sorry. It's working for me. I hope, I hope it works. This be great. Cause I have to usually get three tables and, start basting my quilts on them and 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 you gotta reach way in the center like that's six foot you know six foot three and a half feet so you gotta reach in and try to get the you know the center of it basted and if i can do this with a noodle and it's all right out in front of me that'd be awesome so i'm gonna try that technique and uh, i'll i'll take you with me with on that journey here and i'll be right back okay okay I'm starting to base the quilt now. I'm using Penmore. Um, they're little rubber stoppers that you put on the bottom of the pen as you pen the quilt. And I've got the footage going on a faster mode so you can kind of see this in a more quick time version instead of going through slowly <laughs> and showing you this whole technique but uh, it goes really fast and so far I'm really liking the see the pool noodles are the three noodles on the, 
the right hand side of the screen and I'm rolling up the uh, quilt top because it's too big to just lay on the floor. And so I'm unrolling the pull noodles and I, at the end and I'm unpinning the top right now and I'm showing you there's the PVC pipe that connects the pull noodles and uh, I'm unpinning the backing, I mean the batting and getting that ready. And I kind of didn't get all the pins out, so <laughs> making a mess there. And I and I go back and smooth, smooth out the top and continue pinning until I'm completely done with this quilt top. Right. I am quilting this the spring snowstorm quilt on my Sweet 16. You can't see the machine, but I made sure that you get a close up on the uh, machine here. And I am doing like raindrop, some raindrops on it. And I'll show you the source of that. It's from Amanda Murphy's book, uh, Organic Free Motion. I, I use, use that book a lot when I do a lot of uh, machine quilting. Uh, not every every design I do is out of that book, but anyway, I am making little raindrops and and they're all sort of irregular. They're not the same. So, and I start off. I just make the bottom at a point, and then I have to make sure I don't have a pucker right here as I go over the seam. And then, and then I just swing back down to make the next raindrop. And I have a, I'm, I'm using the Sweet 16 uh, machine, as I mentioned before. And I also upgraded it a couple years ago. Uh, I bought the, uh, the inversion, or I can't remember what the name of this table is, but it has little sensors on either side right here. And it, does a true stitch or a uh, regulated strip uh, regulated strips uh, <laughs> regulated stitch uh, I don't know why I can't say that anyway I'm just doing raindrops and they're going all different directions like like they're being blown in the storm you know like uh, rain goes uh, well they're actually just going up and then down because uh, I'm doing them this direction and that direction, both directions, but up and down the quilt, you know, going one row up and then going, uh, scooting over and going one row down. And each time I have the raindrops pointed, you know, in the, in the direction I'm sewing. So, and at first when I started this, I could, I could only do them this direction, you know, going down. But uh, now I'm able to, because I practiced a little bit, do them eat in both directions. Like I can sew that way or this way, doesn't matter. And this is the first time I've ever quilted a quilt where I'm doing, you know, rows of things when I'm quilting. I normally either do a meandering a stitch. Okay, and you can see that it's pulling right here, so I have to just lift up the quilt, make sure it's up. And I'm using a Martelli, Martelli hoop. You can use any hoop you like if you're using a machine like this. I have a smaller Martelli hoop. I hardly ever use it, but I think I'd use it more if I was using a, a regular sewing machine, because this gives me a lot of space and uh the martelli hoop when i first got it had this um i don't know if you could no you can't see it but under on the underside of this hoop has like a sticky a sticky surface you're just gonna have to take my word for it you can't see it in the camera but uh over time it has gotten um kind of weak and i asked i emailed the martelli company and asked them if I could buy a replacement 
you know, rang for the bottom and got no answer. So I don't know. I'm going to have to do something. Maybe uh, I was just thinking maybe shelf paper might work. You know that uh, rubbery looking shelf paper? So I'm just doing raindrops up and down. Pretty much that's what I'm what I'm using to quilt this and I'm going to continue quilting this and I just wanted you to see how I was finishing this. Very pleased with how this came out. It's all straight. There are no puckers. I see some wrinkles from my ironing job. I didn't iron that well, but that's just, that'll come out when I, when I either wash it or whatever. But the pool noodles, that's, that's a new one. That's a really good idea. So I hope to try it. Okay. And, and on the front, you can see that I did raindrop, a raindrop quilt, um, quilting uh, pattern on the front. You can see real close. And it's all over. It's an all over meandering pattern. Hopefully you can see that. I, I'll put a close up uh, photo of, of this. And it's, they're all irregular. They're like, this one's this big. The other one's, you know, they're, they're all different sizes. I find, well, for me, for me and my, my quilting, I like to have irregularity, um, different, which works out because, um, I don't know. I just like, it. it's like handwriting, you know, it's my handwriting, but it's quilting. But anyway, um, so on the next episode and get ready, we're going to do a Dahlia, which is the ultimate scrap busting design. It does have Y seams and you do use bias or it does have bias edges. And what else is, Oh, curve piecing. So there's three things. So, uh, three things quilters are not too keen, uh, to use or do, but don't, don't be afraid because you can do it. I will tell you a story on how I started making Dahlia quilts is that my mother, when I started quilting, I said, Oh mom, I'm, I'm learning how to quilt a long time ago. And, uh, I had just done a little baby blanket for Ohio stars. And, uh, and I said, well, okay, what kind of quilt do you want? Mom? She goes, Oh, I want a new Dahlia quilt. And so I didn't really know exactly what a Dahlia quilt was at the time. So I look it up on the internet and I, fa I found somebody had a, a really small pattern. It was a, I can't remember how, how big this Dahlia was. It wasn't very big. Um, it's like 20, 26 inches or something. I can't remember, but it, it was a smaller one. And I, and then I called her back the next day and said, mom, this looks a little hard. <laughs> what what did I get myself into so when you start quilting people are like oh I want a quilt and I want this they'll give you requests right well I've had a lot of requests since then but not 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 something that difficult so for my second quilt I ever made I made a dahlia not really knowing how hard it was not knowing that quilters hated bias edges not knowing that people quilters hated Y seams and not knowing they didn't like curve seams either. I did not know. I did not know that these things were, um, what quilters generally don't like to do, but I, so that was my second quilt. And so <laughs> I, I can do a Dahlia. I've done a couple. I did a huge one for my mother. She, she decided she didn't like the colors of that Dahlia. So I gave that one to my grandmother, my second quilt. And then I, um, made her a blue, blue and white one later. And so that's what we're going to do next time. We're going to do a Dahlia and get out your scraps because I'm going to get out this big scrap pot thing. I have not opened it opened it up yet. It's a tulip pink stack of fabrics. Uh, I think it's called tiny bees. Anyway, I'm going to, we're going to do that next and I'm going to use all of those. Well, at least I'm going to try to get all of those may not use it the whole thing, but I'm going to do my best 
and I'm going to make a dahlia out of that tiny base. Uh, I think it's a fat quarter set. It's really big. And um, I haven't used it yet, and I'm dying to use it. So the next, we're going to do a scrap dahlia in the next time. So please like and subscribe. I appreciate you guys being here. I know this was a longer episode. I wanted to show you that pool noodle, you know, basting technique. And I also wanted to show you the design I chose for, the, for finishing this quilt. So maybe you want to try it or or not. But anyway, I'll, I'll see you guys later and thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. Bye.